Well, hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. It has been a while, three weeks to be exact, since I released a new video. Y'all, I'm still trying to get into my YouTube flow here. Um, it's a lot of work. Editing videos, it's a lot of work. And I'm also on a little bit of a learning curve here, but I've also been a little busy working on some new patterns that I'm very excited about. I actually just released a new pattern. One of the patterns that I've been working on, I just released it last week. It's called the Cozy Jacket. It's a spring jacket that can be sewn in wovens or knits. It's very versatile. It's got lots of pattern hacking potential. So I put a link in the description below if you want to go check that jacket out. I'm going to be having some sew alongs and more stuff coming out for that too. So you can also join my email list. I've got a link to that and you can get $5 off your first pattern order on my website, patternscoutstudio.com, and you'll be notified when I release all of the new sew alongs and everything related to that. So today's tutorial is just a really simple self-drafting project. I'm gonna be showing you how to clone a pair of leggings. This is something that has been on my to-do list for a while because I have a pair of leggings that I bought from Old Navy, gosh, maybe like five or six or seven or eight years ago. It's been a long time. They've held up really well, but they are starting to show their wear. They are getting little rubbed, like faded spots on the thighs where my thighs rub together and they don't have any holes in them, but I definitely wear these all the time. And there have been several occasions where I've thought, gosh, I wish I had another pair of this exact pair of leggings. So I decided to make an exact replica of these leggings and I'm gonna show you how I did it. I definitely recommend studying your clothing and even cloning your clothing if you can and if you're interested in that and if you're interested in pattern drafting too, it's a great way to learn more about pattern drafting. I plan to continue to build the playlist for pattern drafting here on my YouTube channel. I've got one other video showing you how to draft a wrap blouse using a bodice sloper and I've also got a class on drafting your own bodice sloper. I'll put links in the description to those videos as well. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Okay, let's get started on these leggings. The fabric I'll be using for this project is a medium weight cotton poly spandex blend with four-way stretch and decent recovery. And as you can see, it's really similar to the color of my leggings. I'll be transferring the pattern onto trace paper so that I can reuse this later. And I'm just gonna cut a length that is several inches longer than the length of my leggings because I want to add a little extra at the top for a fold over waistband instead of drafting a separate waistband for the pants. And I'm just taping down the trace paper to my cutting table so that it doesn't shift while I'm drafting. I'm gonna draft the front leg of the pants first and I'm just kind of finding the point where the crotch meets on the front and back leg and I'm folding the pants in half making sure that I align the seams really well along the edge and along the crotch curve. This takes a little bit of finessing, but you basically just wanna get this as flat as possible so that you can really see the shape of that front leg pattern piece and all of the seams are along the edges. And since the back leg is bigger than the front leg, it's gonna kind of fold over the edge a little bit, but that's okay. Now I'm just gonna trace around the edge of this front leg piece with a pencil. As I trace this, I'm trying to get as close as I can to those seam lines and I'm including the waistband here on this draft. So you can see here that my fold of my inseam is about a quarter inch away from where it needs to be just because of the way I had to fold the fabric. So that's something to keep in mind. And when I get to the outer edge of the front leg, I'm having to lift up and kind of guesstimate where that seam line is gonna be. It doesn't have to be perfect here, but you wanna get it as close as you can. And I'm doing this all the way down to the angle of the pants. So once I have this draft, as you can see, I've got it kind of dashed in. I'm gonna go around with my pencil and draw in the lines a little bit darker. And here on the inseam, I kind of messed up. I didn't realize this until a little bit later and I'll fix it later, but I'm adding a quarter inch. I should have actually subtracted a quarter inch, um, but I'll fix that later. And then for the rest of this, I'm just going around and darkening those lines. And this is all without seam allowance, which I'll add later. Once I get the basic pattern shape outlined in pencil, I'm gonna go back in with a Sharpie and add the seam allowance. So I'm adding a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire pattern, except for the ankle and the waistband. I'll add that later. I'm gonna do a few adjustments there. And here, once again, I'm adding a quarter inch seam allowance to the, uh, to the quarter inch that I added to this inseam, and I didn't need to do that, but I'll fix it later. I'm adding a half inch seam allowance to the ankle, and I'm leaving the waistband without a seam allowance for now because I'm gonna add um, a little bit of detailing there. So I'm just dashing this in around the entire perimeter, then I'll go back with my Sharpie and create darker lines that I can see a little bit better. And I'm just using my French curve to draft some of the curved edges here. But you can also freehand this or use a straight ruler to do this. You don't have to have a French curve to do this. So 
So I decided to integrate the waistband with the front leg and you can see that the waistband is separate on this ready to wear pair of leggings. But I'm just gonna add extra fabric at the top of my leg to fold over for the waistband. So I've marked here two inches for the waistband as it is on the pants. I'm gonna add an additional two inches for the fold over part where the elastic is gonna be attached. I also decided to raise the waistband just about a half inch because when I wear the leggings, the ready to wear leggings, I do feel like they kind of are just a little bit lower than I'd like them to be. So I raised the waistband a half inch here. And now I have this four inch piece that will be folded over for the elastic. Now, here's where I realized that I needed to fix my inseam and I figured out that I basically just needed to draft the inseam right where I originally traced it. So now that will include the seam allowance and I'll just cut out my pattern piece. And you can see down at the bottom, I've got half inch seam allowance and I'm going to make sure that I label this so I don't forget what this is for. And I wanna also make sure to draft the grain line on the pattern piece to make sure that it is laying in the right direction when I place it on the fabric. The back leg was a little bit trickier to trace. So I started out tracing the crotch curve and the inseam first and not including the waistband here just because it's kind of tilted back. Then I measured the width of the back waist and made a little note of that on my page here and mine was eight and three quarters inches and then i used my front leg to true the side seam of the back leg so i lined up the ankle then i pivoted the front leg piece until i could get that waist point to align with a point that was eight and three quarter inch from the center back so this took a little bit of trial and error but i basically wanted to make sure that i maintain that eight and three quarter inch width and also had the side seam the same length as the front leg side seam. So I went back in, I slipped that front leg under the trace paper and then traced the side seam of the front leg onto the pattern piece for the front, the back leg. And that way I know that my front and back legs will match up at the side seam. And then I also shifted that over to make sure that the front and back leg match at the end seam and they did. Then I just did the same process to add the waistband at the top and trace the seam allowance and labeled my pattern piece and added my grain line and then cut it out and I was good to go. I had both pieces cut out. I just lined them up again just to make sure that those side seams would match up and I'm ready to cut my fabric. So I folded my fabric so that I can cut two pieces at once and I cut two pieces mirrored of the back leg and two pieces mirrored of the front leg. And that's it for cutting the pieces. So now I'm ready to start assembling my pants. To start, I'm going to sew the crotch curve on both the back and the front, sewing the two front pieces together and the two back pieces together at the crotch. I'm using my serger for this. And again, I have a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, I'll open up the back legs and lay that face up. Then I'm gonna take the front legs, open those up and lay those face down so that right sides are together. And I'm gonna sew both side seams. And if you don't have a serger, you can also use a zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. So here I've got my side seam sewn. Now I need to attach the inseam. So I'm first pinning this at the crotch. Then I'll pin along the entire inseam from ankle to ankle. And I will sew that on my serger again with a quarter inch seam allowance. So now my pants are mostly assembled and I have to attach my waistband. I've cut a length of waistband elastic here. This is a two inch wide elastic and I'm gonna sew this into a tube and I'm going to attach this to the waistband. And I'm using pins to separate the waistband into quarters so that I can easily line this up. And since the back is a little bit wider than the front, I've got this laying flat and I'm just gonna put a little clip into each of the side seam or each of the side edges so that I can get a nice alignment with my quarters of my elastic. And I'll take this over to the serger and attach the elastic to the top of the waistband. And the elastic is on the interior of the pants here. I've turned off the blade on my serger here just to make sure that I don't cut into the elastic and I'm attaching that right along the edge at the waistband. Now I can just flip that waistband down toward the interior of the pants so that the elastic is sandwiched between those two layers and I'm going to stitch around the entire perimeter of the waistband to attach the elastic and keep it in place. I'm using a twin needle here and this will create a stretch stitch on my sewing machine and give a really nice finish. 
Again, if you don't want to use this type of needle, sometimes they can be a little bit finicky. You can just use a zigzag stitch and that will be great to hold this in place. And so now you can see that's very nicely and neatly finished and the elastic is very even all the way around. The last step is to hem the ankles and I'm going to finish the edge by serging. You don't have to do this, but I think it just makes a really nice neat edge. If you have a cover stitch machine, this will actually be a lot easier to hem these. But once I get that surged, I'm just gonna flip that edge toward the interior and I'm again gonna use my twin needle to stitch all the way around the ankle. Again, you could use a zigzag stitch for this if you'd like, or if you don't wanna use a twin needle or you don't have one. That's basically it. Now I'm going to fold my pattern and put it away in a manila folder. This is how I store all of my paper patterns. And I wanna make sure I label it and put any kind of notes like the waistband, elastic length, those types of things on the outside of the package so I don't forget. And then I'll store it in my nice neat little pattern storage system here and I'm done. And just for a little comparison, here is what the old leggings looked like, and here is how my new leggings look. I think these turned out pretty freaking great for a pair of leggings that I was trying to copy, so I'm happy. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully I can get in a better schedule of posting more regularly eventually when I kind of get all my shields together and figure out a good schedule for editing these videos. But thank you for watching. I really appreciate you being here. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe and that way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Okay, I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Should I talk about my bangs? Okay.